Hello everyone, this is Melody from Paradise Creations. I just want to give an update on the uh, giveaway Saturday. Uh, those of you that have not entered yet, uh, you've got two days to do it. Now, I'm going to end the uh, giveaway Saturday night at midnight. So that means Sunday around 2 o'clock, I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw, uh, do, the, uh, do the giveaways. I'm going to do three giveaways. One is for crocheting, one is for knitting, and one is for sewing slash quilting. Um, you need to put the word crocheting if you crochet, knitting if you knit, sewing if you sew clothes, whatever, or quilt into the comment. Just the word, if you want to make a sentence, if you want to talk a little bit about what you do, uh, go right ahead. I love to hear what people do with um, things that they uh, buy. And I used to work in the fabric department at Walmart way back in 1999. I first started out, didn't know a thing about sewing. Well, a little bit I did, what I remembered from, from home ec. And I went to Walmart and uh, to fill out an application because they didn't do it by computers back then. And so I got a phone call, I think maybe about a week later, I got a phone call, can you come in for an interview on so-and-so day? I said, yeah, I can do that. So I went to the interview and she says, do you know anything about sewing? I said, yes. She says, okay, well, you're hired. You're going to work in the fabric department. I, I didn't know one fabric from the other because we weren't taught that at home Mac. <laughs> So uh, I had my mother's sewing machine, the one I always talk about, that green Kenmore. Uh, I had her machine, and uh, I did sew a little bit. And uh, I had my first sewing book that I got from Nancy Zeman. I think it's called Sewing 101. And I needed to refresh my memory because I didn't sew for, well, from uh, 1975 through, when did I get that machine? 1993, I think it was. So that was a lot of years without sewing. And and so I started working fabrics. I didn't know one fabric from the other, but I sure did learn real quick because I would read the bolts and I would read um, what kind of fabric it's made out of, the width and all that stuff. I never paid much attention to it before when I bought fabric for myself. You know, I just saw something I liked and I says, I, I would like to have uh, like two yards. Well, I didn't even know what yard a yard was. I mean, that's how ignorant I was on sewing. And so I really had to teach myself all over again. And I had a friend, and this was in Virginia, and I had a friend, she had a shop downtown and she did alterations. I went into her one day and I says, look, I'm trying to make these pants. What did I do wrong? I don't remember exactly what it was, but it had to do something with the legs of the pants. <laughs> I don't think, I, I think maybe I sewed the legs together or something. I don't know what I did. So she sat there and she she got her seam ripper out. She started stitch, uh, ripping out the seams. And <laughs> she taught, finally she taught me what I did wrong. So now I know how to make pants, but uh, that's about the only instructions that I had to get from anyone when I went back to sewing. <laughs> so anyhow, to get back to what I was talking about, um, so I didn't know much about fabrics at all. And, but when a customer came to the cutting table, oh, that, I had to learn how to cut, you know, how much they wanted. And uh, thank goodness we had a ruler that's on, that was on the cutting table like they do now. And if they asked for one quarter of a yard, I'm going, hold on a minute, I've got something in my eye. I have dry eye, and my eye tears up every now and then, which, and I need to get some drops to put my eyes. But sometimes I get a little tear in my eye, and it makes my eye sting. But anyhow, so 
a customer would come up and she'd say, um, I'd like to have, like, let's say, a yard of a cotton or whatever she's gotten. I'd always ask, well, what are you going to make out of this? Because I always want to know what they were making out of the fabric that they were purchasing because I was so interested in it. And working in the fabric department was a real learning experience. I really had to know what I was doing. And they even had the crafts and the yarn and all that combined all in one area of the store. And it was in the back of the store where the um, auto shop was. Well, it's, still, it's probably still there, but uh, it, was back, it, it was in the back corner where the auto shop is. And so I, I didn't know anything about yarns either, but thank goodness I didn't have to sell those. I just put them on the shelf and, you know, refill, and that was it. And now my department manager, she was really good. She taught me about how to um, put the yarns up and, you know, how to read the lot number, not the lot numbers, but the um, item number or whatever it is. She taught me how to do that. And matter of fact, I did a few resets with her. And so that's how I learned about that part of the department. Then the rest of it was easy because it was notions. And then you had your craft section and you had flowers. Mm, sorry about that. So uh, I'm always interested in what, like, like the person that won the last giveaway I had with all those patterns. She uh, sent me a reply and said that she received them and she loves them all. I would love to see some of the work that she's done with those patterns. So if you're watching this video, send me some pictures in my email. So um, if, unless you want to do a video, you know, you can do a video on your channel if you want and let me know and I'll look at it because I love to see what people create. I mean, you've got a blank piece of fabric. You've got your scissors, you've got your sewing machine, your pens, and your pattern. There's nothing there. It's just all plain, and then bingo, before you know it, you've got something put together. And I just think it's, uh, I just think it's so much fun to find out what people do with stuff like that. Like with a skein of yarn. It's just a skein of yarn. There's nothing to it. But then you start making something out of it, and it grows and grows into what you want to make it out of. And it's just amazing. I sit here sometimes when I'm crocheting, and I'm thinking, I can't wait to send the, see the end result of what I'm making, like that poo. That took me about a week to make, and I made it said too big. I'm going to make another one and I'm going to pay closer attention to the instructions for the head because I think that's where my problem was. Uh, I think I was in too much of a hurry to get it done because I think the head was the last thing I had to do. So I think I was in too much of a hurry or maybe I stuffed it too much. I don't know what I did wrong, but anyhow. So to get back to the giveaway, um, go ahead. You've got, today's the 23rd. You have two days to get it entered well you've got two days and an hour and a half because it's 10 30 at night right now and it's thursday so you've got two and a half days to uh, get the get your name in there and i always let people know either by liking and clicking the heart or i will put a comment in something like you're entered or something um so go ahead uh, if you if you if you like all three, if you're like me and you like more than one craft thing, because I like the crocheting, I like the sewing, and then I also like to paint, like on wood, and um, I like to uh, put things together. And, um, I don't know, like plastic canvas. I like to do plastic canvas things. I love to make tissue covers with plastic canvas. So. Um, yeah, so I do more than one thing, and I think all of us out there in the crafting world, I think we all do more than one thing. So if you sew, knit, and crochet, hey, put that in your uh, comment. I knit. I, I, I love knitting. I love crocheting. I love sewing, if that's all you want to say. 
or if you just want to put the three words in because the random picker is going to be looking for the word sewing with the ing on the end knitting and crocheting it's going to be looking for those three words and i'm going to do the words one at a time so i don't get mixed up and i don't even know if i put all three in in the box at the same time with um, apostrophes if it would find it or not but i think it's more fun if we do it with, uh, three different times and if you i thought of something today and if you like all three things and let me get my thoughts straight on it because I was thinking about it today while I was working in my sewing room yeah I got some more stuff done in my sewing room um, so you know I just forgot what I was going to say about the giveaway what was I just gonna say see my mind goes oh my mind's off it just goes blank in a heartbeat what was I saying oh I remember what I was saying so like if you do all three and you win all right let's say I put sewing the word sewing in first and if you win for the sewing but if you come up for the crocheting and the knitting afterwards I'm going to redo it because I would like to get I would like to give everyone a chance and there's quite a few out there that say that you knit and crochet both that you crochet sew and knit and so if your name comes up one time and you've won something but then it comes up a second time I'm going to re redraw for another name um, I think it's only fair to do it that way so we can give the other people a chance and it, it has happened like with the um, with the Christmas in July fairies I saw a, cut, a few videos where it has happened because uh, some of these creators they wanted to draw two names so they can spend, send something special for them from them and then send, uh, um, then get a semi-finalist to give to Dana and don't forget Saturday is the big finale giveaway of Christmas in July fairies I've got my name out there I doubt if I'm gonna win there's there's like uh, let me see I think there was close to 200 um, creators that got involved in this uh, giveaway I tell you it was so much fun every evening I'd be hunting down all these fairies I didn't get them all but my name is in the uh, pot so we'll see who wins whoever wins they better warn their mailman in advance <laughs> they're going to be getting almost 200 gifts <laughs> that is going to be so much fun I I really I kind of hope it's me because I I could, you know, that, that's exciting to know that um, you're going to get almost 200 gifts in the mail. <laughs> Poor mailman. <laughs> Thank goodness um, our mailman comes up our driveway to uh, bring packages to the front porch. <laughs> oh, I would love to win that contest. That would be so much fun. But anyhow, it was fun just tracking down all these fairies. I think I got, I think I got close to maybe 75 or 100 fairies. I'm, I really don't know how many I grabbed a hold of, but I know I didn't get them all. And it was a lot of fun. And I'm really excited Saturday. I don't know what time Dana's going to do the drawing on Saturday. Um, I'm going to have to watch her latest video or if she has a video that says update I'm gonna to have to watch it and see what she says uh, oh and if if your name was drawn and you won something remember you had to be subscribed to Dana's website I mean her uh, YouTube channel also it's Dana Wonderlust Wonderlust something like that anyhow I'm 
I'm already subscribed to her, so you have to be subscribed to her if you want your if you want your chance of uh, winning that big, humongous finale. Oh, I can't wait. I am so excited. I think I'm more excited about what's going to happen Saturday than I was for a month waiting for the fairies uh, to get all the comments in. Okay, well, I think that's about it that I'm going to talk about for the for the um, for the uh, for the giveaway I'm giving. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, don't wait until the last minute, please. Don't wait until the last minute if you really, really want to be entered. Um, but like I said, I'm going to have it open until midnight on uh, the 25th, which is Saturday. And then Sunday, I'll do the drawing. I figured if I did it at 2 o'clock. Now, let me think. Sunday is church. People like to go to church. Now, I forgot. I've got the West Coast, and they're three hours behind me. So if I do it at 2, it would be like 11. They'll probably be in church. All right, I know what I'm going to do. I'll change it. I'm going to change it to Sunday at 5 o'clock. That way I know that uh, people on the West Coast in California, Washington, and all that's um, already home from church. They've already had their Sunday dinner, and they're relaxing. So I'm going uh, I'm going to have the drawing Sunday. Uh, July 26th at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Okay, well, you have a good day or a good night whenever you're watching this. Please subscribe, click the like channel, leave comments and questions, and bye-bye. See you Saturday.